Now, if you've watched this show before, you know these are colors. I am, you know, I'm not Miss Pink person. <laughs> okay, here comes a good one. <laughs> I think unexpected in the shadows. I like to put, actually, I like to put unexpected things everywhere. I don't know, you ever remember being a kid and uh, playing with the shadows on the wall and doing little birds? <laughs> Hi, welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. We're gonna just really do a, a, a deep garden scene today, something that's just totally different from the things that we normally work on here on Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm really excited. It was it was uh, uh, Bush Heart Gardens in Victoria, Canada, and here this is this is a great creative analogy. Here is this rock quarry that's desolate and the woman has a vision to turn it into a beautiful garden and it's just a series of incredible gardens everywhere you look. It's just one wonderful thing after another. So I took tons of pictures and though I don't normally paint landscapes, it got me so excited that I had to give one a shot. So what we're going to do today is the sunken garden there. And I encourage you to Twitter me questions. You can find me at Shannon Grissom or on Facebook. It's really easy to find me on the internet. So just Twitter me, ask me whatever you want, and we'll try to respond. Um, uh, one way, if, even if I don't get you immediately on the show, I will answer everyone back. So Shannon Grissom, and I will, I will tweet you. <laughs> so where do we start? One of the really cool feedback um, items that I got from people who watch the show is they'd like to see different stages of a painting. So I've actually blocked some of this in. I, I started in the back, or actually I started in the center, and started to work my way out. So I've blocked in basic shapes for the background so you can see how that's done. And I'll do some of that in the middle here as well. And then we'll go into some of these areas and further refine them. So you really get a sense of how to work the whole thing. And I'm just excited. And the other thing that's interesting about this piece is the, um, I, I, love, I love the perspective. I love that you're really going in deep. Um, it's a lot more 3D. It's really 3D. In fact, it'd be great to have, uh, it's almost like one of those viewfinder, or if you had 3D glasses, it would be really cool. So. We're going to have to do an episode like that. So anyway, where do we start? Well, I've painted so much cool and so much green here that I'm going to start with the red because <laughs> it just needs to have a little bit. So I'm going to mix a little bit of that. I'm going to take some CAD red deep, actually some CAD red medium, and I'll mix that with a little bit I'm going to tone it down a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Perlin Scarlet. And tone that down with a little bit of violet. There, that's a nice shadow red. Now, in the reference photo, the flowers are pretty orange. And, uh, I want mine to be redder, <laughs> so they're going to be a little redder, a little pinker, and actually a little cooler to tie in with everything that's here. So I'm tying in a little bit. There we go, some of this violet there. That's just gorgeous. What a beautiful red. One of the cameramen, when I brought in the painting, said it reminded him of, of a fairyland. And I thought, wow, that's just really cool. 
We'll have to paint some little winged things in there. Okay, so that's a nice dark. And I need a little light to contrast that. And brighten that up just a little bit. Okay, so we've got nice two tones going here. Let's see if that'll work. Now, when you're this far away, you don't see every blade of grass. You don't see every petal. What we're doing are just putting in some real abstract shapes, and those are giving you the sense of where you are. So, and also, this is, in the, this is a little bit further. This is an overhead shot. I'm, if you can picture, I'm standing at the top of a hill and I'm looking down into this garden, it's sunken. So everything is pretty far away. So usually the further you go, the lighter something is. Um, so I'm gonna have to be wary not to make this too bright. I'm gonna start off really bright, but I might have to tone it down a little bit. We'll see how it goes. All right, so where am I gonna start with the little shadow first? And just put that in right under there. I think I need a little medium. There we go. So I'm just throwing in some color there. And I think I want a little bit of uh, just right under here. And how far does this go? Just right up here. Easy to get lost. There's so much going on. Normally, I pick paintings that are very pretty. I mean, the colors may be bright, but it's a very uh, lots of space, very zen. Now, this is very zen too, but it's there is so much going on here, so it's easy for me to get lost. And rather than starting back to front, I started in the center and I'm working my way out. Okay, so there's a little bit of light here. And I'm just putting in basic shapes. Let's see, there's some red right here. And how far up does that go? Pretty much just around the, right around the band here. That looks good. Now where's the rest of this red? I, I could go find that other red and plop it in, but I'm gonna just, I'm gonna paint things that are adjacent to each other, otherwise I'll totally get lost. Okay, and there needs to be a little shadow in there, so I'm just going to grab a little purple with a dirty brush. Put in the shadow. I have a little bit of bigger reference photo for me so that it's easier for me to see what's going on than some of these bigger, tiny, tiny photos don't work. I usually paste them all over my studio. There, that helps it get grounded. This goes right on the other side of his head. I think it's a him. Not really sure. Too far away. Okay, that looks good. So now let's just see where we are with the rest of this. Might put in some uh, dark shapes here just to quickly block in this, this brush here on this side. So let's mix some green. This is truly about uh, seeing large shapes rather than every little blade. Okay, so I grabbed some sap green and I'm gonna mix that with a little bit of phthalo turquoise. That's a good dark. I'm not, gonna I'm not sure how good a dark it is until I add a little bit of white to it to see where it goes. So I'm gonna move a little bit of this over Wipe my knife. I 
That's very cool. The light's different there than it is. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm from California. We get a lot of bright, direct light that's not filtered by atmosphere or moisture. It's, it's pretty, pretty much in your face. Um, dark shadows, lots of contrast. And this was really soft and filtered. It was beautiful. OK, so let me see if that's going to work. It might be just a little too sweet. <laughs> Just a little too sweet. We gotta just uh, roughen this up a little bit. I think it needs a little more sap green, but that that might be good for the light. So I'm gonna move a little bit of this over. And I don't want all the greens to be the same color. So I'm gonna add a little bit of white to this and warm it up just a little bit with a little bit of green and maybe just a little bit of this cad yellow deep. We'll see what that does. Might not have been enough. Okay, that's a nice light. That might do it. Okay, and then just make a nice dark. There we go. See, in both cases on the palette, I'm comparing these two greens together and these two reds. They're harmonious here on the palette, and they are happy neighbors. Got to have happy neighbors. There is nothing worse than bad neighbors. <laughs> well, there are, there's things that are worse. But anyway, it's not a happy thing. So you, you want to keep them happy on the palette. All right, that's mixed. Okay, so let's block some of this in. I'm going to get a little bit bigger brush, a little bit scruffier brush, because I am not going to do uh, detail. And I also want to make sure that I, was, that I had enough of this covered. So where am I? I had some violet here. I think I need to throw in some more violet up there, so I'll leave that alone. So where, where does this green come from? Well, I guess I'll have to start at the bottom to find that out. So let's throw some in right here. Okay, so we've got the red. This comes down here. See, it's so easy to lose your place, especially when you're talking to people. But I can do it all on my own, too. Okay, so we have a little bit of green there and a path. My goodness, it comes clear up to here. And that is definitely not dark enough, so I will make it dark. How am I going to do that? I'm just going to add some purple because that'll be fast. Now, there should be a better reason than just because it's going to be fast. Um, but sometimes there's not, you know? <laughs> because there should be this technical reason why I'm adding this purple to here. But, uh, <laughs> and there is. Um, first of all, it's warm. I wanted to warm it up a little bit. I wanted to make it darker, um, and I knew that I would get instant results. I can also add some reds and play with it, but it would take me longer to get there, and sometimes I just don't have the patience. How's that for <laughs> non-technical painting help? All right, so let's see. Where's the base? we got a path going here and another one going there, so it's pretty much right here. See, that did, that did mute it down quite a bit. That's nice. Don't you love it when things work like that? And I'm just going to, you know, it's easy to make scruffy little brushes just by scribbling. Where else do I see some dark? A little right here. That's cool. A little more over here. I gotta stop because that's that's got more of the violet. Then I'm gonna go into this green and not even clean my brush. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
and I'm just going to put it right over the top. Remember me if you if you want um, some questions answered, definitely feel free to get on Twitter and drop me a note. Okay. Some nice dark there. And we need to have some light in there so that that makes some sense. I'm using the same brush. I'm doing it left-handed. Now that is just bizarre <laughs> because I'm right-handed. But um, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I'm working on a big piece and I'm on the other side of the painting, I just grab my other hand and start painting. One cool thing about doing that is that uh, I'm just not as good. So it helps it helps uh, me to loosen up. Uh, I, I'm not so much worried about any of the details. I'm just putting the shapes in it. And I think it also, when you use your left hand or, or the hand that's non-dominant, it puts you in an alpha state and you're more receptive to creativity. Give it a shot. And if it bugs you, don't do it. <laughs> this is supposed to be fun. I don't usually think about it. It's just one of those things that just kind of happens as you're painting and I'm rolling with it. Learning to roll with it is what happens. OK. Just drop something on the floor. I'm going to go get it. <laughs> uh. Now, you know, have you seen that reference photo? Is that just amazing? That is just. Um, you know, when I, looked at, when I looked at the reference photo, I thought, God, I don't know if I even want to paint this because I just like the photo as it, as it is. But I had to give it a shot. All right, I'm going to throw in some color, make this a little more pink. So I'm going to add a little white to this red. Ooh, got to clean my knife. I know it's early, but I feel like just grabbing straight paint here. Let's move this over. Let's make some pink. Bet you never thought you'd hear me say that. Sometimes it's just what I have to do. There. This is about letting go. About just putting color down and not being too worried about the results. All right, so where did I see some, um, there, has, there was a little bit of, Violet right under here. I think it needs to be lighter. There we go. There was some right under here. Maybe a little here. I think I'll just throw some of that there. A little more here. And then just throw a little green line in here. And I'm just brush mixing it. See, these are just very abstract shapes. I don't know. I don't know if, if abstract is like, you know, uh, uh, kind of an oxymoron when you say they're very abstract shapes. It's kind of like a little bit pregnant, you know. <laughs> it's just not. <laughs> okay, so, so uh, maybe very was unnecessary. These are definitely, <laughs> maybe it was redundant. They're abstract shapes. So I don't know about you, but my mind tries to make sense of these shapes that have no meaning so that, so that I can identify them and re replicate them. And um, sometimes I'm better than that than others. And so for me, what was going through my head was, okay, this was kind of a squiggly S line, and that's what I'm painting. So I have to admit that even though I'm painting these wow man trippy shapes, I am trying to make sense out of them. So what do I see here? Well, that's just kind of a linear blob, and, and uh, so that's what I'm painting. I hope that makes sense. And you know what? I don't see this red here, but I feel like it, so I'm putting it in. So yes, I am painting the gardens, but this is not a commission piece where they wanted a, 
a true representation in time or, or something for Bouchard Gardens. This is something, this is my own little fairy world, wow man kind of thing that I'm doing for me. So if I want to put some red there or change a bush or two, I'm going for it. And that's, that's kind of where I'm at today. But there are times when I will try to be as true as possible to what, what I see there. This isn't one of them. <laughs> Not happening today. Okay, where was I? Oh, let's, let's finish these bushes up here because they just need to go. Um, it needs a little more violet in, in this area, but I need a bigger brush. It needs to be a little lighter and a little grayer. So how do I do that? I've got a little lighter here, a little bit of blue. Maybe that was over the top. Imagine me doing that. God, I love that color. It's <laughs> so not where it doesn't go there, but it's just beautiful. Okay. Must be the shirt. I'm influenced by my shirt today. Okay. That's great. I like that. Is it where I want to go? No. See, that's the cool thing. If you can be in the present and be happy, let's say it's not the right color you're trying to mix. But if you can be happy with where you are at and be excited about where you might go, then the whole painting process is awesome. Rather than beating yourself up for not, not being at the end result at, you know, when you're there. All right, so what about this violet? Let's see if we can throw some in right there. Oh, that's pretty. Might not have been the right thing, but it, it's uh, what I saw there. But that doesn't mean it's not just perfect for the painting. All right, that was good. That's enough of that. Got a little red there just because. Not too much around the edge because you don't want to call attention to the edge. I have to stop. Slow down a little. Add a little grayer tone. In what way is these bushes are kind of going sideways? <laughs> well, they may not feel like they're going sideways, but that's how I see them. All right, so then there's another one here. And how far down does that go? Maybe just a little darker as it gets lower on the page here. Got to ground it. Add a little violet here. Beautiful color. Okay, and let's just throw some neutral green over on the side. Uh, I'll tone that down with a little phthalo turquoise. It's a cooler green. Going to be a little different than what was there. Mm, maybe just a little too cool. I'll add a little violet, warm that up. That wasn't enough. <coughs> And these bushes kind of go off in a little different, off and up. So I'm just following their little shape there and not make it look like it's in front. And we don't want it too uniform. That's good. And I'll step back. Yeah, that's starting to do something. I don't know what, but it's starting to do something. Okay, let's say we just want some of this red to kind of tie in together so it doesn't look like it's lost. We can't have lost red. You can lose other colors, but red does not like it. <laughs> okay. Part of uh, Oh, I like that. I have to stop, though. You know, that's, that's the other thing. You know, you think of a little bit as good, a lot is a whole lot better, but um, not always, so it's, it's time to stop and uh, you know, introduce some other stuff. I'm going to just clean up this little white space here and tie that into the red so it's just not, look, so it doesn't look like it's stuck on. And I'm going to do the same thing with this little uh, base of the cypress. I love these cypress. They're happy. I've seen si sad cypress. I have one in my backyard. <laughs> OK. All right, so what, what's next? What do we want to block in next? 
I think I'll finish this whole this whole side here, and then see what we see what happens on the on the other side. So the other down at the bottom is a little a little pink. I'm going to lift the canvas up, and I'm actually going to make a. God, I love this purple that's on the knife. I got to be able to use that somewhere because it's just so cool. But um, here we go. A little bit of pink. It does not want to be pink today. There we go. Is that too much? Yeah. All right, I'll add a little. Maybe not. I'm going to put it down anyway. Okay, so here, here's the struggle. I'm, I'm verbalizing what goes through my head. What I see down at the bottom of the page is pretty light, light pink, almost white. And so I was going to go with that. But as far as the painting goes, if I have a white blob here, which is pretty much what I have when I, don't, when I have not covered the canvas, it sticks out like a sore thumb. So maybe so that you're not going off the page and looking at this white blob, maybe this pink that's not light enough will work. And I just had to try. It's kind of like, it's kind of like golf. <laughs> I know you guys are saying like it's always like golf. But um, this is it, hole number 18 at San Juan Oaks. Y you, um, especially from the women's tees, if, if, if you could hit it far enough, you could go between these two, two trees and get them on the fairway. And um, so, so when I'm playing in a scramble or I'm playing something serious, I go for the post and I hit it and try to hit it in the center of the fairway so I'm not doing anything radical. But if I'm out there by myself, I go, I go for it. I try to hit between those two trees. And you know, it, every, <laughs> every time so far, it's landed in the ditch in the poison oak. But one of these days, <laughs> and I don't go get it. I bring a lot of balls for, just for that hole. And one of these days, though, I'm going to knock that thing on the fairway. So what does that have to do with painting? Well, you know, there's times to play it safe, and there's times to just go for it. Yeah, I like that pink. It's not such a harsh thing. And you know what? I'm throwing that purple in there because I'm, I'm thinking about a whole number. <laughs> whole number 18, San Juan Oaks. All right. I'm not playing with anybody. I don't have to play it safe. I'm playing in a tournament tomorrow, so I'm going to have to not go for it. But I could go for it if somebody else got us in really good ball position. <laughs> it's a scramble. I could do it. Oh, that's nice. No, this, this, at that point, it's a team thing. You've got to just be one with the team. They also have, that's hole number 18, 17 has these elevated tees. And you, the guys get to tee off from this really cool, tall place. And um, the gals have to tee off, or, or the forward tees are, they're just not as fun. So um, that's the same thing. You got to go up there and give it a shot, and when you make it over that gully, I mean, it is the best feeling. And I really, I know I keep talking about golf and all parallels, but don't be afraid to, to throw some paint on the canvas, because when you make it over that gully, it's just happy. Like, like right up here, there's a little spot there. Just throw in some purple now and then. You, you know, just go for it. All right, so we got that, that in. Let's get these little paths in. What's going on over here? Need a little more green. All 
All right. I'm going to throw in, we've got a little pass going here, kind of a bed, a low-level bed, and then another low-level bed over here. So it's separated by some violet. So a quick way to block that in would just be to get some violet and a little bit of phthalo turquoise, and let's outline it. Yeah, I know. We're really going to outline it. Okay. I'm doing it with squiggly shapes. Yeah, that's good. What else does that do? It kind of goes off the page here. And there's another raised bed. Hell, you know, you could do it left-handed, too. This, this again, this makes you not be too picky. Oh, there's a little blob there. Oh, I know. I'm not a master gardener, so I don't know what the blob is. Um, it looks like a porcupine bush. I will ask my director. She's actually a master gardener. She could tell me. Okay, so we've got this outline. We know where these beds are going. Have a little bit of contrast here. This is a little bit of uh, slightly different than that. You want it to be lighter and warmer. And this too, same thing. So to make it lighter and warmer, I'm going to take the green mixture. Add a little bit of cad yellow deep. Now normally when I go out to the golf course, um, when I paint, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't paint with my golf clubs, and when I golf, I, I don't take my camera. I, I golf. That's, you know, that's what I'm there for. But every once in a while, and I never answer my cell phone on the course, right? Just don't do it. But every once in a while, you, you're, with, you're either stuck in a slow group or you're playing with some slow people, and you get chances to take some pictures. So I'll, I'll grab the phone, and, and um, you'll notice some really cool things out there. I think it really it puts you in a zen place. Okay. All right, so we got a nice light there. It almost looks like the same color <laughs> that I had before. So I'm going to just take some straight orange because I seem to be doing the same thing over and over again. And you know that's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And sometimes when I mix and paint, it happens. I, d I just can't get off of it. All right, that's good. It's warmer. Still lighter, very close to what I had. So I'm just, there we go. Throw some in here. Get some straight orange. So you notice that a lot of the time, it, it is spent just mixing, just getting the right color. The paint application doesn't always take as long. OK, so that was a little bush there. This is a little cooler up here. I'm going right into that blue that we use for an outline. And is that it's more of a flat thing, so I'm going to just make it that way. Not much texture. Going right up into here. I don't think I like that shape, so I'm changing it. There are things that work in the photograph that might not necessarily be perfect in a painting, so go for it, change it. All right, so this goes off. This, this has more of a pinky. Oh, this is where the purple can go. Love it when I find a place for it. Yeah, we'll stick it right here. A little bit of blue. And it's weird what will run through your head <laughs> when you're doing this. <laughs> there was this, um, yeah, 
<laughs> try to decide whether to tell you or not. <laughs> um, I was going to tell you about the lavender blue dilly dilly song that from my childhood, or um, there was also one from the Funny Farm. And um, so, anyway, I'll tell you what: Twitter me or blip me, and I'll I'll blip them for you. All right, so we have some violet hair. And what do I want to do with this shape here? That's just a little awkward. Um, in the reference photo, it's not so awkward because we don't have that. Uh, let's let's put the lighter shape in and see if it's what it's like. I need some more white. Okay, when you're squeezing more paint out, you want to knead the tube. And you know what? You can squeeze from the middle as long as you got one of those tube rollers and you can fix it later. And besides, if you're the only one using your paint, who cares where you squeeze it from? You can always get the paint out later. But the reason that you need it is so that you're not getting a lot of oil. You're getting the, an equal mixture of pigment and oil. All right, so I'm going to make a light, light green. Mostly yellow. I think it's time for some Indian yellow because that's just wild stuff. Let's mix a little of that. How do I, how does that look here? I just threw a bunch on there to see if I liked it or not. I think that's going to stick out like a sore thumb, but I'm going to try it. And if I don't like it, I can tone it down. There we go. It's warmer than anything else here. That's for sure. Another scruffy brush. That'll work. And this, the shape of this, I'm just going to follow the shape. Now there's a million ways to paint this. This is just how I do it. The main purpose, or the main thing I want to get out of this whole show is to just go for it. Don't have to paint like me. Don't even have to paint. Whatever it is, go for it. All right, so I'm going to stick some dark right here, right at the bottom. almost in a little line and take some white lighter there we go that's enough of that we got a little little bush there and what do I want to do with this just tie this in somehow with the violet so I'll take some blue a little bit of green And just fill us in. And I'm just lightly mixing and, and uh, blending as I go. And that shape, shape is just way too abrupt. So I'm going to soften it. And I'm also going to change it. That up a little bit. Lighten that up a little bit. Don't want these things to look pasted on. Okay, that lost its definition, so I'll put that back in. But I'm not going to spend too much time there. I mean, we, we got a lot we want to do, or I got a lot I want to do. And also, by putting it down and not spending too much time in one area, you're not futzing. It's starting to futz, so I got to let it go. I always like to have a theme for the painting besides the instructional part. And uh, this, the theme for this particular show is definitely letting go. Put it down, move it on, move it on. All right. That's starting to work. This, I'm not so sure about this space here, whether we need that or not, but I am not 
going to mess with it until we get the canvas covered. I look at the whole thing and decide, is this somewhere I want to be? Is this somewhere I want to go? So now it's time to stand back from my painting and say, OK, where are we? What I really like about what's happening so far is that you're getting this sense of depth. You're really going in deep. You're getting the, the uh, separation uh, from the different levels of vegetation, different color. There's some interest. The reds do tend to look like they are just um, a little out of place, <laughs> a little over the top. So this is, this is a case where as much as I love red and as much as I, you know, if I just looked at this isolated part of the canvas, I'd be going, wow, that's really cool. And then you step back and go, ouch. <laughs> and this is a case where, you know, for the good of the whole painting, you have to kill something you love. And so that's what I'm going to do now. So before we go any further, I'm going to tone down the red. How would I do that? I could actually take some of the green that's on my brush and mix that right in with what we're doing. So let's try that. A little bit there. You can still see some of the red there. And also, I need to ground this cypress. A little bit here. So now you're getting the hint of red, but it's not in your face. OK, this, this light, I think I totally uh, lost my light here. Can't have that. Light's very important. This whole place was so light filled and so beautiful. There. See, you can put it back. Uh, I need a little more light on this side, too. And I'm just going to tone the whole thing down. Imagine that. Bet you never thought you'd see me downplaying the red. But you know what? It's got to work. Now, I just painted over that man's head. I totally wiped out his head. I, um, I chopped it off. But you know what? If, uh, you could be very careful and paint around it. Uh, I don't have that kind of patience. And besides, what I can do is just go over it. And when this dries, I'll put his head back. <laughs> right now, it's got to go. OK, so there, that's happy. And same thing with this. i got to tone this down, too. And so why is green over the red working? Why is that? Not just because there's green in the painting, but because it's opposite on the color wheel. So they're complementary colors. All right, so I totally toned that down. Now, you can see the red under there. And what's nice about that is you're getting that sense of warmth. So now, now it's going to be a lot more harmonious. OK, we can do two things. We can quickly block in some shapes here. And we'll do that for a little bit. And then the last part of the show, I want to just kind of define a little bit of areas in here so that, so that we can get you know, even more of a sense of what's going on. So what do I want to add here? We've, you know, you step back and take a look at it. And what big shapes can I put in that will make sense right away? And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over some big shrubs. This place was so amazing. OK, so we've got like a little, uh, little round robin thing. There's like about four shrubs here. Yeah, OK, we'll go for that. How am I going to do that? I'm going to grab some sap green, phthalo turquoise. And these are like balls. <laughs> they're going um, to have that round shape. So we're focusing on form here. So at the root of them, let's see, we'll find the first one. How did this work? We had a little, little uh, dark on this b base here. And then I would say there's kind of a dark base right here. I think this kind of goes over here.
There were like four of them, right? One, two, three. I think there's some red over here. Ooh, we get to do that later. Or not. Now you see that the cypress had some forms. That's definitely a 3D rather than a flat surface. And we'll, we'll add some shape to these. So the base of these are dark. And there's, let's see, I'm seeing light at the top and at the middle. So I'm going to put that in first so I don't lose it. It would be very easy for me to do. Oh, that's not light enough. It looked light enough on the palette. It wasn't even close. Okay, so there's light here. This needs to go all the way up to this. This is light here. That's light. And then we need a medium. I'm going to exaggerate the light though because I'll overblend it and lose it. And I'm going to use that scruffy brush again for the medium. And I went straight into the sap green because I, w I wanted to warm it up a little bit. I don't think that was enough. Okay. So let's start with this one. It's dark down here. Got to vary the shapes a little. And where's some more green? I'm doing the mediums. We're doing it well, pretty systematically for me. <laughs> All the darks, then the mediums, then the lights. And by doing it this way, I can keep the same brush and not have to clean it. I prefer not to think that it's lazy. Um, I would say it's expeditious instead. OK, so this is starting to get formed. Now, as I go up into this light, I'm using a lot less pressure. So I'm just kind of blending it, squiggling them together. So we got these. And let's just merge these shapes. OK, so I'm going to step back. And you can see that this is starting to take shape, that this is starting to get some form. Now, there is no way in this short amount of time that we would ever be able to, or I would ever, you know, other people could do it, but I am not going to be able to cover the whole canvas. So what I'd like to do next is really build up some of these areas that I've already done here in the background. They're already dry and add some more color in here so you can see where they might go or what I might do with them. So here, from what we've done so far, you can see how to block them in and how to blend them, kind of how I got here. And let's see, where would I go next? Well, one of the things I really like to do is glaze. And you glaze, you apply a thin layer of paint over a dry surface. So I'm going to take yet another scruffy brush, add some medium to it. And what am I, I'm, I'm going to play with these cypress just because I love them. Uh, I think I'll add, I think I'm going to glaze with, yeah, I kept changing my mind, um, with a thalo turquoise. Now you look on the palette. And when you look on the palette, this thalo turquoise this is really kind of bright. And you think that it's just not a, a good, good match. But when you put it down over what's existing, I think it'll work really well. And I'm just going to add it to the edges, pretty much in the shapes 
the way that these things grow. Just on this edge, because this edge is darker. I'm not going to recover the whole thing because that uh, would be redundant. I want to leave the light in the middle, or the middle, uh, a mid-tone, and the light on the edges. Is it a little bright for this area? Yeah, probably. But I'm going to leave it be and, and uh, let it sit for a while before I decide what I'm going to do with it. And then I'm going to wipe my brush a little bit, grab some sap green, which is already kind of transparent, add a little medium to that, go over this middle. Oops. No, that was too much. So what could I do? Add some over on this side. But I got to stop. All right, so how could I warm up these guys? Well, let's, let's do something a little radical and put some yellow over the top. But I'm looking for just the right brush. There we go. I wanted a filbert. What's a filbert? It's, it is, it's not a round. It's not pointing at the end. And it's not a flat, which are squared off. Filberts look like filbert nuts. This is a scruffy filbert that's been around, seen a lot of life. Okay, so now in real life, these things are not real warm. But I'm going to add this right over the top, this yellow right over the top. And this is going to warm up this area here and make them pop too, boy. A little bit of that. See, you can tell there's very little pigment. I'm just glazing right over the top. That warms that up. And you know what? Sometimes I go overboard. Actually, a lot of times I go overboard. But you can just wait till it dries and paint and tone it down a little bit. The cool thing is when you do this really hot stuff underneath, the top layer is just glowing. So I'm lightly going into this light area here. Very little pressure, very little paint. I don't want to destroy all this nice light, because these, these things did have some good form before I started. OK, so it's time to leave those alone. What else could we make pop in this short little amount of time that we have here? Well, uh, this is a little ambiguous in here. I think this needs to be toned down just a little. Nope, that's not the right brush. There we go. OK, so we need to ground this. Actually, this whole thing. I'm putting this right over the violet. And then I'm going to take a dry brush and just blend it. So I initially applied a glaze. And then I'm pushing it up with a dry brush. There we go. There's a shadow in here I'd like to keep, so I'll just put that back. So you can see how that's starting to pop. A painting like this, I might work on a section like this. And that'll be it for the day. And then I work on another section like this and another section. And it might take me a week to cover the canvas. So there's no way that we'd get it done in a short amount of time. If you can do it, that's awesome. I just prefer to have short little bursts. So uh, what's the lesson today? Today it's all about going for it, about throwing some paint down, painting with your left hand. And you know, just um, don't be afraid to, uh, you know, like, like I said when we were golfing, don't be afraid to, to try and hit it between the trees. So what else can I make pop here? I, I think I want to separate this little background. A little 
And this is very vertical. I'm keeping this vertical nature. It's important to keep the, the strokes congruent with what, what you're doing. All right, so I block that in, and the same thing I did last time, take a dry brush. There we go. And I also need some separation here. It can't be the same color. What can I put here? Well, maybe if I just have a little bit left on the brush, it'll work. I'm all about, if you can get it to work with as little bit of effort, go for it. I've left the canvas, I haven't painted any white here. This is very light, and I'm gonna wait till it dries before I apply the light. Otherwise, it's just gonna disappear. All right, I need some dark right at the base here. All right, you start to get a sense of all this green and of the grandeur. And the more you experiment, and the more you're not afraid to just throw the color down and just go for it, the more grand your piece is going to be. So Twitter me at Shannon Grissom. Ask me questions. Talk to me. Uh, I, I'd be happy to see if you go to GiverWallsomeSoul.com. I'm happy to take a look at your work. Thank you so much for watching Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'll see you next time. I'm Shannon Grissom.